everyone and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be doing my review of Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. That rhymes, doesn't it? So first of all, as you guys can see, I am at a new filming location. I have a new bookshelf. Ah, uh, I'm just in love with this bookshelf. This is also partly the reason why I haven't gotten a video out to you guys any sooner. I spent the entire weekend building these bookshelves up and sorting the books out and trying to make it look all nice and pretty. Also, I've been extremely busy with my uni work. So let's get right into Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. So this is actually my second time reading this book. I started this book about more than a year ago. Um, for the first time. I didn't enjoy it as much as I did this time. I don't know what it was. I think it was just that I wasn't in a good place in my life. I wasn't exactly the happiest that I could have been. I really, really, really enjoyed it this time around. I've decided to give this book a 4.75 stars out of 5. Now, um, most of you guys know what Throne of Glass is about, but for those of you who haven't read it yet, it is about an assassin named Selena Sardothian. So basically, she is the assassin of Adarlan. The Adarlan is a region of Irelia. Irelia being a fantasy kingdom that Sarah J. Mass has herself come up with. Selena is only 17 years old. At the beginning of the book, she is working as a prisoner at the salt mines of Endovier. She's been captured and imprisoned. She's been at these salt mines for, I think, about a year until the crown prince of Adarlan comes and takes her out of there and gives her the offer of joining a competition. In this competition, she is supposed to compete against 23 other contestants to be the king's new champion. Selena is very unhappy being a prisoner in the salt mines of Endovier, and so she takes him up on the offer. Now in Adarlan, the king has banished magic and anything to do with magic, but while Selena is there for the competition, she sees a lot of dark forces at work, and it's just about her sort of finding out about them, finding out where they're coming from, um, trying to stop the evil thing that's in the castle, as well as also just trying to become the king's champion and win the competition, as well as some romance going on. Now, I love Selena's combination of being both girly and deadly. She just breaks the stereotypes. She breaks the stereotypes that you either have to be a girl girly girl, you either have to be a tomboy, you know, it's like, like, no, that's not what it is. We're so complex. Each and every one of us is so different. And I think she shows that. She shows that you can have qualities that are both and you can still be your own person and you can still be, you know, a girl in that sense. You don't have to define yourself by any one of those kind of cliche and stereotypical qualities and that's just something that I think is very important these days. She actually reminded me a lot of a mixture of Feyre from A Court of Thrones and Roses and Rose from Vampire Academy. She had the sort of really strong and defiant um, personality that Feyre had but she also had the snarky kind of badass side that Rose did. And because I just absolutely loved both Feyre and Rose, that instantly made me love Selena that much more. The plot was very intriguing, it kept me hooked. There were some things that were a tiny bit predictable, but um, overall I think that Sarah J Mass delivered an excellent story and she definitely threw me off a couple of times. I'm gonna get into a spoiler kind of zone here, so for those of you who haven't read the book yet, I suggest you go and read it. It is a very, very fun and exciting read, and then you can come back and discuss it with me. Bye! So one of the things that I just absolutely loved, and I know that this might be a bit of a weird thing, um, but I think that it's something that authors don't really grasp at in literature, and that is the mention of Selena having her period. I just generally think that women's periods have always made us feel shameful and degraded in the past. And I think it's really good um, for an author to acknowledge just, you know, the natural shitty things that we women have to go through every single month. I know that the concept of her period was integrated in a way that made sense with the plot, but nevertheless, I just really loved that just tiny little detail that showed us that, you know, Selena, no matter how badass she is, no matter how vicious, no matter how deadly and lethal she is, she is still human. And she has things that make her weak, and she has times when she has to crawl in her bed with pain, just like most other women do every month. I just really love that little tidbit of information, and I, again, it just sort of breaks the stereotype of not being able to talk about these kind of gross things, and I just really loved seeing that, but maybe that's just me. 
I know that um, over the course of the next Throne of Glass books, I I sense a love triangle, um, octagon, whatever going on. But I, in this book, I was definitely Team Selene and, and Dorian. Dorian was just so adorable. He was so caring. He instantly saw that good human moral side of her that Cole sort of, you know, took a while to see. However, I still think that she and Cole share a kind of deep, meaningful aspect to their relationship as well, especially when Cole kills Cain at the very end. And I think that that aspect sort of bonds them together even more because Cole sort of feels like he's lost his sense of morality, like he's lost his sense of humanness. And I think that from that point onwards, he suddenly sees her in a different light. He sees her as more soft and more tender, and he sees her as something that he wants to become. He wants to be able to overcome that darkness that has permeated him after he killed Cain, and he's, he looks up to her. And I can definitely see a relationship between the two of them involved as well. However, I think that Dorian was just so cute and he was just he was so sensitive and he treated her not like an assassin he treated her like a girl and I think that that's just what Selena wanted I think she wants to frighten people I think she wants to make that kind of um, impression on people but I think that deep down she also just wants to be treated like an equal she wants people to take her seriously not because they're scared of her but just on a human level and I think that that's what Dorian offered her in this book and that is why, at the moment, I am Team Dorian. But I know for a fact that that's gonna change in the previous books. And I'm kind of frightened about how Sarah J Mass is gonna do this, because if A Court of Thrones and Roses wasn't an indication, then, <laughs> then I don't know what is. I also just love the banter between her and Dorian, the kind of remarks that they threw back and forth, just sort of, you know, added this sort of layer to their friendship and layer to their relationship that just sort of made me like them even more. I think that this was sort of similar feeling that I got about with Christian and Lissa. Christian and Lissa are my OTP of all time, by the way, but it's just sort of reminded me of their relationship about how Christian's sarcasm and snarkiness sort of, you know, pulled Lissa in, and I think maybe in this situation it was similar. I also think that Dorian has sort of that trope going on that I see um, somewhat a lot in YA literature these days, which is the crown prince who doesn't agree with his father's ideals. I can just sort of see the king starting to not trust him as much, and I'm a bit scared of how this is going to end for Dorian, but it is also extremely intriguing. Now, I think that I'm pronouncing her name right, but Nehemia, the princess of Elway, she was just so wonderful. I loved seeing her and Selena's friendship develop. I love the way that they bonded. I love the way that, you know, Nehemia showed Selena that she can be rebellious, that she can stand up for what she believes in, and that it's really important to stand up for what you believe in. When I was reading the book for the first time, it hurt me so much when I felt that Nehemia was evil, for just a couple of chapters, I actually thought, yes, she was the one who, you know, um, was the one who summoned the Ritterac. And I think that that's how Sarah J Mass sort of threw us off for a couple of chapters, and it just, it hurt me so much. And I feel like Nehemiah and Selena's friendship has just sort of, I don't know, just has just taken me in so much. I think that the fact that Nehemiah has named Selena Elantia has a really strong meaning, and I think that that's going to play itself out in later books. I think that the name is going to be a very powerful thing, um, especially in the last couple chapters you can see that symbols mean a lot. Nehemia giving Selena her long um, wooden stick for the battle. Um, I don't entirely know what the, like, the technical terms are for those sticks, but I think that just symbols in general play a big role in this book, especially with the word marks that summon the dark forces from the other worlds. However, I think the fact that I gave this book a 4.75 stars instead of a 5 stars was because it was just a tiny bit too predictable that Kane and Duke Parrington were, were the main antagonists. The fact that they took Caltanen was actually a bit painful for me to watch. Um, I think Caltain herself isn't necessarily an evil person. She just wants to get to Dorian and she's very selfish, but I don't think that she deserves to be seen as like an antagonist. I was just like really shocked in the end to see that she was the one who actually delivered the poison for Duke Parrington. I don't think that she enjoyed seeing Selena get harmed, but I think that she's just so fixated on her goal. She has this sort of tunnel vision of Dorian, Dorian, Dorian that she forgets to think of others. 
and I think that that is just her downfall. I just really hope that eventually she will see that Duke Parrington and the King are just using her and that she might be able to show her sort of good side as well. I was also just like really intrigued about what Elena, the former queen, wanted of Selena. I was really intrigued by power that she could manifest and the fact that Selena sort of um, was drawn to that and you can definitely see that there's something in Selena that we don't know about yet. Whether that's something magical or whether that's something that's just ingrained in her humanity, I don't know yet, but I'm just really excited to see like where that will lead us. I'm definitely really excited to start Crown of Midnight by Sarah J Maas, the second book. I have read this book before as well, but I honestly, I don't remember anything of this. I am very excited to get to the next one. I don't think that I'll be able to read it for a while now because I still have at least two books that I need to review um, before getting to Crown of Midnight. And I'm really happy that I get to share this experience with you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed my review. Uh, please leave a comment down below with your thoughts on Throne of Glass and whether you are more of a Dorian or coal shipper. Also, if like me you haven't read all the Throne of Glass books yet, please leave a comment below telling me about what your hopes are for the series. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll definitely see you guys with another video soon. Bye! <laughs>